Hi, my name is Moi Sona, and I am currently a second year graduate student pursuing a master's degree in English literature and creative writing with an emphasis in poetry. Um, I consider Manhattan my second home, but I am originally from Kansas City. So in regards to teaching online during this pandemic, I definitely um, miss community building. And a lot of that happens, you know, when you're in person and when you're conversing with other um, students, just one-on-one -on -one or in small groups. And so uh, one of the ways that I find um, my students engaging with each other and also becoming more and more excited about um, what we are going through is using um, questions of the week. Uh, and in person, I would have them as questions of the day. And so that's just a, a starting point of my class. So, um, so for our question of the week, we have Sebastian, who is also ready for break. Um, and so on a scale of one to four, which one can you relate to? Um, and feel free to hover over the top of the screen and click annotate. And you should be able to also add kind of like little designs or features. So I feel like I'm right here. <laughs> yes, and feel free to unmute as well so then we can um, chat. Probably I like, would say. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to say like I'm at a three. Yeah. <laughs> Two or three. With the flower. I would probably say the third one as well. That's kind of a great picture. <laughs> yeah. But also number two at times, I will say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I've been number two and four a lot. <laughs> yeah. He's also vibing with y'all for sure. All right. And then um, our second question is, what has been a highlight this week? I know the pandemic can make things really difficult, but what has been something good that has happened to you? Um, I have recently been going to like, have you guys heard of the Dusty Bookshelf? I'm sure you guys all have. Yeah. Um, I've been going there a lot to study and just like read and drink coffee and stuff. And I've really been liking that. So I did that earlier this week and it was definitely a highlight. <laughs> So good. And I love going to that place. I going to get a coffee is like a highlight every week <laughs> for me. Yes, me too. In terms of my teaching philosophy, oftentimes students will tell me that English is not their best subject, but they love engaging with stories and journaling and all of these different aspects that show up in their writing in this class. And so tapping into that creativity as we go over various styles of writing and discussions about race, class, gender, and other topics becomes a central part of my teaching philosophy. And so making sure that I create a community where both the writer and the writing are valued um, is, an, is a very important aspect of that. So one of the most effective activities uh, that I use is the Socratic workshop or the pennies for your thoughts. And that's partly because what we're doing in that is seeing an actual example and then having an open conversation about it. As a teacher, I'm acting as just a moderator for the conversation that the students are having. So it's really a discussion that I'm kind of a part of, but it's mostly geared towards helping them um, or it's geared towards allowing them to have those conversations with each other. And the feedback that I get from my students is that they really enjoy the Socratic workshop. Okay, because so for our performance review workshop, um, what we're gonna do is read the first two papers. And for the first one, we'll only read the introduction, um, second paragraph, or yeah, the paragraph after that, and then we'll read the conclusion. Um, even though this example is from an Expos 2 class, it kind of gives you a sense of maybe what you're going to be doing next semester, but also a sense of what this performance review is kind of looking at. Um, so in terms of our first round questions, what do you feel like is working well in this essay? Um, kind of based off of what you've read for like the overview of our uh, this unit, um, what kinds of things do you see working? Um, I think the first paragraph was set up pretty well. It like told me what I was gonna be expecting in the paper. Yeah, nice. So you're like starting to notice like what is going to be condensed into this essay, right? And like how it's gonna flow. Awesome. 
Um, I thought that it seemed to be like pretty professional in the way it sounded and also like very creative to do like the letter to Disney that's like a really cute idea yeah. and also I thought that I kind of read like in between just the first and second and mm -hmm. the conclusion and um, I think that they did a really good job of explaining like an objective and then kind of going into why it was helpful. Yeah, I really like your observation, Sammy, especially too, because you don't often associate Disney with what he he's um, kind of requesting mm -hmm. to be considered for. So I think that brings in a very unique perspective from what is learned in XPods to this. Yes, for sure. And I think that he just did a really good job at like, kind of what Sammy was saying, like he just or explained his qualifications quite well and they were really well organized, but he did it in a way that didn't sound um, like arrogant. He, mm. it, again, it was just very professional. Yeah, so you're kind of on the same lines with Sammy too, noticing how tone is working in this piece um, and to carry like a more professional kind of sense, right? Um, so in terms of what you feel like the, the writer could improve on, what kinds of things stood out to you? Um, where could this go? What revision suggestions do you guys have? That was also the big thing I saw in that second paragraph, like the, all the stuff in parentheses, it seemed a little redundant. Like it does give a lot of information. And, but when you're thinking about the audience, you're not trying to teach this specific audience about the ad, you're trying to get a job. So I'm, that's why I think it's a little redundant. Yeah, I'm on the same page with those guys. It's kind of what I remember because I know like one of the Xbox One papers that we had done was like, I think it was a visual analysis or something, correct me if I'm wrong. And like that part kind of reminded me of that. And so especially that being the first paragraph, I was going back thinking, oh wait, I know this is like a resume paper, but it kind of had um, visual analysis vibes to it. Yeah. So I kind of like what you're bringing up to Ashley and Joseph that um, you're kind of thinking about, you know, with these specific details, in some sense, you know, kind of what Sammy said, what's actually important, but also how do you show specifically, like, this specific detail taught me this thing, whereas listing a list of examples isn't going to necessarily have that effect, right? Um, so do you guys have any suggestions for the reader, or not the reader, but the writer in terms of where they could um, maybe expand upon the skill sets that they've learned or cut down on certain areas? Like I've already kind of said, I think that just taking out a few of the little details might even make it like a stronger paper, just because, I don't know, like I said, you don't wanna distract from what you're trying to do. You're trying to like sell yourself. So I don't know if like putting in the colors that you saw in an ad is really necessary. Right. Yeah, I agree with like, that taking a look out some of the extra details about the ad they did in their past paper and putting more in of what the skills they learned from that paper bringing to the table rather than, oh, this is what I did. That's a little bit more tangible, for sure. And one last observation too, is that um, part of the performance review is reflecting on your own writing and your own writing process. And so to kind of, um, there, I think there's a time and place to critique what's happening in the class or like the workshop, but that might not necessarily fit into the performance review. And one of the reasons why I love teaching so much is also when I leave the classroom, I'm much more energized. And the, the next thing that I think about is how can I do this better? How can I improve this for my students? Um, and so knowing that I am left with those questions after a class period, um, I realize I care a lot about their education and, and about what they're taking away from my class. And so um, that is something that really sticks with me and made me realize that teaching was one of the things that I absolutely love to do. It's both challenging and hard work, um, but ultimately it's very rewarding to see a student on campus and they'll wave hi at me and be like, Miss Sona, how are you? And I'll be like, wait, oh yeah, I remember you. And so those moments of um, recognition or like where I get to still get to see my students, it's really fun.